Let's start with a little self-evaluation today. When is the last time you worried about something that hasn't yet happened? Maybe it's something at school or something at work. When's the last time you felt tension about something that might happen in the future? Maybe it's something with your kids or with your money. When's the last time you had difficulty sleeping because you couldn't get your mind to stop racing? You know, you just couldn't turn off the playlist of negative possibilities running through your head. These are all symptoms of the most common health challenge in America today, anxiety. And we're gonna talk about it in this episode of Journey at Home. It is great to have you with us, by the way. We are creating content, we're building a community here to make it simple for you to follow Jesus and live a better life. So if you wanna make sure you don't miss any of this content, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. This is the second episode in our series, How Are You Doing Really? And the subtitle is very important, Finding Hope for Mental Health, because that is our goal for this series. It's common when someone asks us, you know, how you doing to say, well, I'm good or I'm fine. But according to the latest research, a lot of us, we may be lying about that. Studies show that the rates of anxiety and depression have increased 25% since 2020. And clearly not talking about is not working. So my hope is that through this series, we'll normalize the conversation because the church should be the safest place to talk about this stuff. Scripture is full of stories of people who had their own mental health challenges. That's why I want to reiterate again, you can have a growing faith in Jesus and mental health challenges. Your mental health struggles are not a sign that you don't trust God enough or you're not spiritual enough. It is not a sin to struggle with mental distress. You don't need more faith. You don't need to read your Bible and pray more. You know, it'll all go away if you do. No, people with mental health challenges, they're some of the strongest people I know. Now, I'm not an expert in any of this, and I can only address the spiritual component of these issues. But mental health challenges are often multi-layered and complex, aren't they? So I want to encourage you again, see a counselor and or go see a doctor if you're facing any of these issues. And if you'll go to journeycalloway.com resources, you're going to find a lot of different resources that we are providing for you for free that'll help you, including some books you could read, Bible reading plans. We got resources for kids there, counselor recommendations. You can find it all right there. Today, we're going to have a conversation about anxiety. So roughly 40 million American adults over 18 experience anxiety. That is 19% of our population. But I'll tell you something even more alarming. 36% of all teenagers are wrestling with anxiety. And unfortunately, it is still not something that's widely acceptable to talk about. In his book, Anxious People, Frederick Bachman writes, Unfortunately, I think most people would still get more sympathy from their colleagues and their bosses at work if they show up looking rough one morning and say, I'm hungover, than if they say, I'm suffering from anxiety. He's probably right, but that has to change because no one was created to carry anxiety alone. Now, there is a beneficial version of anxiety, and there's a debilitating version. So Dr. Luana Marquise of Harvard Medical School she wrote a book called Almost Anxious, where she helps us identify what both the positive and negative versions of anxiety do. There is a version of anxiety that helps you perform better. It's the butterflies you get before you speak in front of a group of people or the nervous energy you have before you take a big test. That kind of anxiety actually can help you focus and do your best. Then there's the other end of the spectrum where you're dealing with diagnosable anxiety disorders that cripple your ability to live life the way you want to live and go about your daily activities. Nearly one in three Americans will deal with an anxiety disorder at this end of the spectrum at some point in their lives. But Dr. Marquise also talks about this almost anxious region where anxiety is diminishing your ability to live life well, even though it hasn't developed into a disorder yet. And a lot of us live here too. We feel nervous and on edge, can't stop worrying. We have trouble relaxing, sitting still. We're easily annoyed. We're afraid something bad will happen in the future. Nearly one out of four Americans live in this almost anxious zone where what we think and how we think produces anxiety in us. Now that is what's important to understand about anxiety. Anxiety is fueled by negative thinking patterns. It's like having a software virus on your laptop. You can't see it but it's behind the scenes slowing everything down. Author Jody Picot summed it up best. She said, anxiety is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it gets you nowhere. You just keep thinking about what could be wrong or might go wrong, but you're not actually changing anything when you do that, right? 
So if you are stuck in that rocking chair and you want to get out, let me show you something that might help. The Apostle Paul, he was writing to a group of Christians in Philippi who they were feeling anxious about the circumstances they were facing. And Paul knew from personal experience what it felt like to carry anxiety. He had seasons where it was a really tough battle for him. If you didn't watch the last episode we did, you can check that out there. Uh, let me show you today what his advice was on how to start overcoming it. In Philippians 4, he writes this. He said, the Lord is near. So Paul says, let's start with recognizing and trusting that God is with you. You're not alone. Now, why does that matter? Well, when you feel anxiety, it's because you're trying to control something that's out of your control. You can't control your kids, can you? You can't control your employer. You can't control the stock market or the job market. But when you recognize God is with you, it gives you the freedom to stop feeling responsible to control things you can't. You can now change what's in your control, and you can trust the one who has all control of your future, that he's right beside you and he's going to handle the rest. So Paul says, because God is near, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Now, listen, Paul's not saying anxiety is a sin. He's saying anxiety is a signal, not a sin. It's a signal for you to talk to God. When you feel anxious, just use it as a trigger to pray. Just tell God, hey, I'm, I'm anxious about getting this job, or I'm anxious about having enough money. I'm anxious about my health. I'm anxious about whether I'm a good enough parent. I'm anxious about losing a loved one. I'm anxious about the health of this person I love. I'm anxious. So God, I'm going to do what I can do. I'm going to make healthy choices. I'm going to give my best effort at work. I'm going to work hard in school. I'm going to apply everywhere I can for a job. I'm going to do what I can do, God. But I'm going to trust you with the rest because the outcome is out of my control. Now, did you notice Paul says to talk to God about this with thanksgiving? In other words, he says, why don't you sandwich all the anxiety you feel with gratitude? Why would he say that? Because gratitude literally changes my thinking patterns. It breaks the negative thought loops that we get trapped in that create all the anxiety. Now, Paul's not saying ignore your fears, but he's saying you can be grateful in the middle of them. You can pray, God, I'm anxious about keeping my job, but I'm grateful I have a job today. God, I'm anxious about what's going to happen with my kids, but I'm grateful I can love them well today. You know, I'll, I'll just make the most of today. I'll let you worry about tomorrow, God. And the promise is when you do that, that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Isn't that what you want? Peace. Peace lets you live life well. Peace lets you be fully present with the people you love. Peace lets you rest. Peace lets you stop worrying. Peace is the exact opposite of sitting in that rocking chair moving nonstop. And Paul says, you can actually pray your way toward peace, but you also have to think your way to it. Listen to what he writes next. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. If you want to find peace, your thoughts have to change. If you want to overcome anxiety, you got to be one to pause and evaluate what you're thinking. And is it against this standard that Paul gives us? In other words, the thoughts I'm thinking right now, are they true? Are they right? Are they helpful? Are they healthy? Paul's going, anxiety is fueled by negative thought loops. So you got to break the pattern and you got to focus on the good, the positive, the true. You can't let lies dominate your thinking. This is really important to understand. Every thought you have doesn't come from you. And every thought you have doesn't come from God. You have an enemy who wants to diminish you. And one of the ways Satan does that is by introducing lies into your mind. For example, when you think, I can't tell anybody about my struggles. I got to keep quiet. That's a lie. Or when you think, I am my struggle. That's a lie. Listen, you may struggle with depression or anxiety or any number of things, but that's not who you are. That doesn't define you, and it doesn't define your worth. You are defined by what God says about you, not the struggle inside you. And the good news is, you do have control over what thoughts you choose to dwell on. You have control over what you choose to put into your thought loop. 
See, when you think a thought, it triggers a chemical reaction in your brain. And over time, those thoughts create what they call neural pathways. However, scientists now know that we have an ability called neuroplasticity. It's pretty extraordinary. In short, that means you can retrain your brain. You can create new neural pathways and loops that focus on the truth God says about you. But you got to choose to change what you think about. You have to use Paul's list he gave us to evaluate the thoughts you keep and the ones you throw away. Now listen, I'll be the first to admit that is way easier said than done. And Paul knew that because he was fighting that battle himself. He knew the challenge of controlling his thoughts. But he also knew that God was with him to help him if he would just take all of his fears and all of his anxieties to God in prayer. So he encourages the Philippians. He says, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Paul, how can you be so sure that God's with me? Paul would go, oh, I don't have any doubts. You don't have to wonder if God cares about you. He's already proven it. You don't have to wonder if he's capable of handling what you give him. The resurrection proves it. See, the cross proves Jesus is willing to help us. The empty tomb proves he's capable of helping us. So if you deal with anxiety, listen, you're not alone. Your heavenly father cares about you. And he invites you to give all of your cares to him. So will you choose to trust he's with you? Will you believe he wants to help you? Will you take him all of your anxieties and with gratitude just ask him to help? Will you monitor your thoughts? We try to replace those lies with the truth. And will you use the resources God has provided for you to help you? We tell somebody about your anxiety. We go see a counselor or a doctor and get their support. We learn how to let his peace guard your heart and your mind. Anxiety, it is not sin, it is just a signal. It's time to lean into God, to let go of trying to control things out of your control and to trust him to be with you in the future.